The scale that you choose for your y-axis is very important because the conclusions that your end users draw from your visualizations might be very dependent on it. For example, for these visuals over here, would you synchronize the axes like this? Or would you have the axes automatically be determined by Power BI on the basis of the maximum and minimum? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to give more control to the end user and let them choose themselves. Now, let's get started. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos, in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now, let's have a look how we can get more control over our y-axis and why it's so important. Well, let's answer that question first. Now, let's look at this example over here where we are comparing different categories with each other. Now, if you want to make a fair comparison, then probably you want to synchronize the y-axis. However, maybe I want to concentrate on the store sales and you see, well, you don't see the fluctuation really. And you might want to zoom in a bit. Now, to be able to do that, what I want to do is I want to have manual control to change over here the range and then zoom in by changing where the y-axis ends. And now I can see better the fluctuation there for the store category. Now let's have a look how we can create these buttons that you see here at the top. And let me switch between auto axis, where Power BI automatically chooses the scale for the y-axis on the basis of the minimum and the maximum, and where I can switch to manual, where I have full control and can decide myself where the y-axis start and where they end. And this also makes sure that the y-axis of the different visualizations are in sync. And what is also important is that when I switch the axis control here to automatic, that the range slider gets disabled. Okay, now let's get started. First of all, we're going to create that slider that lets us choose the minimum and maximum. Now we're going to do this with a parameter. So we go over here to the top and then to modeling, new parameter, numeric range. Now let's call this parameter axis. And then here we have a whole number. We want to start at zero. And this one is going to end at, let's say, 20 million. Now, the increment is going to be, let's say, half a million, so 500,000. And the default we put somewhere in the middle, so 10 million. OK, now we want to have the slicer. So make sure that one is checked and click on Create. Now, here on the right hand side, we have now a new table, disconnected table, which is our numeric parameter. And we have one column axis and we have one measure which picks the selected value. Now here in the report view, we have a slicer that lets us choose the value. But what value exactly? The minimum or the maximum? Well, we can change the slicer to a between instead of a single value, okay? So that we can choose the maximum and the minimum for the axis. All right, now the maximum, let's put this to 12 and a half million. And the starting point, I leave at zero for now. Then the next thing that we need are the measures that return the chosen maximum and minimum value. Okay, now we need two, one for the maximum and one for the minimum. So let's add these two. Now let's call this one axis max, which is going to be equal to, and here we can simply look for the maximum axis and then over here, close the bracket. Okay, that will give me the maximum value. And then we do the same for the minimum. So let me copy this and then create a new measure paste it over here and let's call this one minimum and here we want to take the minimum okay so now that we have these two measures for the max and min we can select all four visuals now, because the visuals are from the same type and then we can go here to formatting options and then we go to y-axis and here we can click on the fx button and here we can choose the field value and the measure that we're going to use for this is first of all the axis min measure and then for the maximum we're going to set that to the axis max value. All right, so now the axes are synchronized and I can zoom in by just playing around with this slider over here. So if I want to zoom in on this one, I can, for example, put the starting point around 7 million. You see more of the fluctuation. However, the other ones, well, they are outside of this range and disappear. So this functionality is very helpful to zoom in on a particular chart to see more of the fluctuation. Okay, so now how can we take this a step up and let the user choose between manual axes like we have over here, where everything is nicely synchronized 
and we can play around with the scale to maybe an automatic scale where the scale is determined on the basis of the minimum and maximums of that joint. Okay, now first we need again a disconnected table which we can make here in the easy way by going to home, enter data, and let's call this table access control. And then here the column name, I'm gonna call this one option. And the first value is gonna be the auto value, automatic. And here the second one that's going to be the manual option or the synchronized option. All right, just these two values, then load this table. And now that we have this new table, we can again make a slicer. So I'm gonna create a new slicer. I'm gonna put it right next to the other one, just like this, okay? And then we go to the access control table, take the option column and put it on fields. All right, so over here we can switch between auto and manual. Just make sure that here in the formatting slicer settings that we go over here and turn single select on. And maybe you also want to have a horizontal one instead of a vertical. Okay, now let me just resize this and then go over here to the slicer header and let's rename the title text here to access control. Then maybe for the other one, this one we can then also rename. And this one I'm gonna call range. Let me switch them around, probably makes sense. Okay, now at the moment when I click you on auto manual, nothing happens yet. The next thing that we need to do is update the axis max and min measures over there and see what is selected in the axis control. If it's manual, then I want to pick up the maximum and the minimum here on the basis of the selected range. However, if auto is selected, then I want Power BI to automatically choose the max and min on the basis of the values that are visible in the series. Now, let's go over here to Axis Max, and then we can update this one. So over here, we can say if bracket open, then we want to check in what the selected value is. Now here we want to see the selected value of the well, chosen option, auto manual. And if this one is equal to manual, then we want, well, what we had before, take the max of the selected range, okay? And otherwise, well, otherwise nothing, okay? Blank. And the same thing we can do for the minimum. So I'm just gonna copy this over. Then we can go here to the min measure and this part we're going to delete, paste this in, and the max we can replace with min. Now let's see if this works. If I switch from manual now to automatic, then the axes are not synchronized anymore and it's just based on the max and min of the series itself. If I switch to manual, we have synchronized axes, which allows fair comparison between the different product categories. And if I want to, I still have the option here to zoom in using this slider. Now, the only problem is that when I switch here to auto, I can still play around with this slider However, nothing really happens until I switch to manual, which is maybe a little bit weird. So as a finishing touch, I would like that slider to get disabled when I switch to auto. Now, how can we do that? With a filter. A filter, you're on the range slider. Now for this, it's going to be important that the axis control filters the range slider. So just double check by selecting it, go here to format, edit the interactions and make sure that it's set to filter. Okay, then I turn it off. And now we have to write a measure, a measure that checks what is selected. So I'm going to go here to access control, add a new measure, and let's call this one range disable. Okay, and also here we can use an if statement and we want to check again what is selected. So the selected value for our access control option. Okay, and if it's equal to manual, then we do want to show the slider. So then we're going to return a one, otherwise we're going to return a zero. Well, we can now use that measure on a visual filter. Now just make sure that the range slicer is selected Then open the filter panel. And then here we can put filters on this visual. And here we want to use that range disable measure. So I'm going to drag it on there. And we want to say that it should be equal to what? Apply the filter and see when auto is selected, well, then we have the value zero and the range slider gets disabled. However, when I switch to manual, you see 
now it gets enabled, all right? And otherwise it's grayed out. Now let's update the design. And that's it, we have now full control of our Y axis. If we want to have synchronized axes, we go for the manual option. If we want to zoom in, then we can just play around with this range that we got over here. And if we want to have auto scaling for our axes, then we can go for the auto option. And that slider gets disabled. Now let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you want to have more design tips, then check out these videos over here. And I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next video.